Prince and Princess of Wales have attended their first church service since their wedding. Back from their two-week Mediterranean cruise, the couple are staying at Balmoral with the Queen. They drove the few hundred yards from the estate to the small parish church of Crathy this morning, where a crowd of over 5,000 had gathered to welcome them. Michael Cole was there too. There are no signposts to Balmoral, and right outside the castle, the name's even been painted over with the anonymous words, South D side. But 5,000 people still managed to find their way there, and there was no doubt about who they'd come to see. In the first royal car, Prince Andrew was in the front with the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh behind. But the oohs and the ahs were saved up for the car which followed. Like the rest of the royal men, the Prince of Wales was in Highland dress. The princess's outfit was rather harder to make out at a distance. Tourists were still arriving during the service, and neighbouring fields were turned into car parks. One veteran local policeman told me he could never remember such numbers at Crathy. <laughs> After the service, the prince and princess returned to the castle to resume what's intended to be a private holiday, with only one scheduled public appearance at the Braemar gathering early next month. During the several weeks they'll be staying, there's bound to be some shooting and fishing, and there's certain to be a piper to wake them every day. The first part of the wrecked helicopter which crashed into the sea off the Norfolk coast, killing 13 men, has been brought ashore at Great Yarmouth. It includes the main rotor gearbox. The chairman of the firm which owns the helicopters told Tony's case he believes the failure of the gearbox caused the crash. But there obviously has been a failure in the main gearbox which has caused this catastrophic accident. What would be the effect of gearbox failure? If there was a seizure in the main gearbox, uh, it would almost inevitably lead to a rotor rundown, a very rapidly rundown. Isn't it a matter for concern that nearly 60 people have died in crashes in your helicopters? It's of grave concern to me and my colleagues, but it has to be looked at in the perspective of Bristow's having flown in excess of 11 million passengers the last 16 years, 2 million hours of flying, and in excess of half a million tons of freight. We are gravely concerned, but what I am concerned must get to the bottom of, is why helicopters disintegrate in flight, why manufacturers and the licensing agencies can't make helicopters safer. It's not our maintenance that should be criticized or our pilots. They are the best in the world, best in the business, in fact. We are gravely concerned, and I hope to goodness this terrible tragedy will serve as an example to get some of the things we've been ad done, that we've been advocating for years. The Prime Minister of the Irish Republic, Dr. Garrett Fitzgerald, has accused Mrs. Thatcher of inflexibility in handling the hunger strikes in the H blocks. He said it had increased anti-British feeling and bitterness in the Republic. Dr. Fitzgerald, in a television interview, also called on British politicians to say publicly what many said in private, that a united Ireland was the only solution. That would end the belief in Ulster that there was still strong British support for maintaining the union with Britain. Cardinal Tomaso Fee, Roman Catholic primate of all Ireland, has also criticised Mrs Thatcher. Referring to their meeting last month, he said she didn't seem to consider Northern Ireland a priority, and she didn't realise the impact of the, of the hunger strikers on the youth of Ulster. Speaking on radio, he again urged the IRA to call off the hunger strikes. The chairman of the Merseyside Police Federation has demanded tougher policing methods following yesterday's protest march in Liverpool. Sixteen policemen were injured, two with stab wounds, and a police station was attacked by youths wielding iron bars. From Liverpool, Martin Henfield reports. Boards hide the damage caused when a crowd of youths laid siege to Wavertree Road Police Station and the three officers inside. They'd smashed their way in, but fled when police reinforcements arrived. And four officers are in hospital following the violence at yesterday's march, calling for the resignation of the Chief Constable. We were quite well spaced out. And, uh, of course, the, the idea being that it was supposed to be a peaceful demonstration, or they said, said it was going to be a peaceful demonstration. And uh, it was just it was just like a pack of hyenas. It was just an unprovoked attack. They just dived on us, didn't have a chance. We've had unprovoked attacks on the police officers. And now our members say enough's enough. We've tried low-profile policing, 
it does not work. We've still got the problem. And we cannot have ever-increasing lists of police casualties and no arrests. That must cease. Tonight, the most seriously injured of the officers has a fractured skull. And the arguments over policing on Merseyside continue. In Zimbabwe, the authorities are investigating a series of explosions at a large ammunition store 20 miles northwest of the capital, Salisbury. The explosions at the Incomo military camp shook buildings in Salisbury and blew the roof off a country club more than a mile away. Emergency teams have been hampered in their search for casualties by bushfires. Sabotage has been ruled out, and one theory is the blasts were set off by a gas cylinder that caught fire. With just one day of the Old Trafford test left, it looks as though England should win the match. Mike Brearley, who's already led England to two improbable victories, has agreed to lead the team again for the final test at the Oval. England were all out at lunch, leaving Australia to score 506 to win. At the close, Australia still need 296. Mike Blakey reporting. At 10 minutes to three, Kim Hughes was reading an account of what happened to his team yesterday. Perhaps he still can't believe it. At nine minutes to three, he was on the field after John Dyson tried to take a quick single to David Gower. Australia were eight for one, and they made only another 16 before Paul Allott put England one step nearer retaining the Ashes. Wood had made six, and the Australian cause looked hopeless. But stranger things have happened in this series so far, and Graham Yallop helped Hughes put up the 100 off just 18 overs. Then both of them made another contribution to the match. Hughes had made 43. And then came one of the most sedate pitch invasions for some time. Luckily, the umpires carry a spare set of bales. It took the spin of John Embury to remove Yallop, who made a splendid 114. And Embury also dismissed Kent, so tomorrow Australia still need 296 to win, with just five wickets left. Britain's men athletes came third in the European Cup finals in Zagreb. The women came fourth. There were wins for Sebastian Coe, David Moorcroft, and perhaps one less expected for Mark Holtham in the 110 metres hurdles. He won by six hundredths of a second. Ron Pickering is the commentator. Mark Holtham in lane five. Spanking conditions, very warm. The poles are way ahead of him, and Shabwell is going well. Holtham is coming back at him. Schliska of East Germany, but Holtham's with him. Holtham and Schliska. Schliska's going well. Holtham spinning at the line, and he's got it. That's a magnificent run. On the top bend, and Cole leads. Willie Wall back in second place. Fire is third. And Cole looking for danger. They're there with him. Wolver hunting him home. And Cole kicks from the front. And it's all over. Cole goes right away and makes the lads look as if they're standing still. Sebastian Cole comes home in front. 200 to go. And it's still Moorcroft for Great Britain. Kunza in second place. Third is Vestingaga, and Moorcroft gradually increasing the pace. Abramov is fourth, and Moorcroft now grits his teeth and kicks. Kunza tries to attack on the near side. Vestingaga is beaten, and Moorcroft coming away. Kunza in second place, and here's the Russian on the near side. But Moorcroft wins this for Great Britain. Kunza second, Abramov third, Gonzalez four, Vestingaga five, and Kova six. A magnificent piece of running by David Moorcroft. And that's the news on two. Good night.